I'm curious because uh, when you first started out and you did Shaun of the Dead, and I, I understand this because my people uh, are descended from uh, Ireland. I'm 100% Irish. So I understand what is called in the UK the tall poppy syndrome, where it's, oh, yeah. it's something that's in British culture where if someone's had a lot of success, people feel the need to chop him down. When you first hit with Shaun of the Dead, um, not long afterwards, there were people in the UK who had the sentiment, Simon Pegg's growing too big, too fast. Is that true? Well, I was, I was aware that that might, so because Sean was a was a was a was a hit, and and yep. you know we 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 received a certain amount of attention. I was anticipating this being the case. So, um, in an interview, I think with probably the Sun newspaper, and they and they accusingly said, "Oh, you're going to go off and go to Hollywood now, aren't you? Like that's right. some sort of treasonous criminal act, you know? Right. Like I was going to cross some misty bridge at night and never come home again." And I said, quite, I mean, just. Off the cuff, I just said, I'm not going to just leave and be in, I don't know, Mission Impossible 3, which right. was a film which didn't exist at that time. It was just Mission Impossible 2. And then about a month later, J.J. <laughs> Abrams called and said, hey, do you want to be in Mission Impossible 3? And I said, yes, I do. <laughs> Where's my plane ticket? And, uh, and that happened as well with, what else did it happen with? There was another thing that I... Well, probably Star Trek, because I know that you're a big sci- I mean, you've had this- yes. you You've had this run of, and I just is because I've interviewed you a bunch and I'm I'm familiar with, uh, with your predilections, uh, not all of them, but mm -hmm. you really do, I mean, you idolized uh, Star Trek and then suddenly you're in Star Trek. It's as but if- I said, Go ahead. In they're in space. This is this is what it was. The, I had a, in our sitcom space, which is where we sort of began. There was a line from my character about the I, the notion of certainty, and the line was as sure as eggs is eggs, as sure as every odd numbered Star Trek movie is shit. And then you jump forward like maybe fifteen years, and I'm writing Star Trek Thirteen. So it's, <laughs> it was a self fulfilling prophecy. I do feel <laughs> I do feel that in a previous lifetime. Um, and not that you don't deserve success, because you certainly do, but in a previous lifetime, you did something very heroic and wonderful. <laughs> because nice. see, it feels to me that you're constantly working on projects or being able to join projects that you would have been huge, a huge fan of. You'd have been in line to see that Star Trek movie. You'd have been in, in line to see Mission Impossible if you weren't in them. Absolutely. It's a beautiful It's true, thing. and it's very strange now. It's a lovely thing, and I and I've I'm I'm never not blown away by that sort of circularity of the stuff that I enjoyed as a kid. The the, you know, whether it be the films of Spielberg who I ended up working with, or or being into something like Star Wars or Star Trek, and right. and getting to participate in that. It's been a real treat, you know. And I'm here now on the you know we're making Mission Impossible Seven in uh, or not. It's not called that. I don't know what it's called yet, but it's certainly right. not Mission Impossible Seven. Sorry. Um, but we're here doing that, and it's very exciting. <laughs> Lloyd, but behind you, you can't see this, but lawyers are closing in on you. Very much. <laughs> Tom Cruise um, is just like this with a gun, just no. yeah, <laughs> just a little red dot on your head, and, tish, and then down.